So here in uh, this uh, Dramacot Forest Reserve, actually it's a logging area in the central northern part of Sabah. Uh, it's uh, always claimed as a very good sustainable uh, place for regeneration of the forest after a very careful logging, so probably it's true for the trees, uh, but for the forest understory species, small plants, especially the species which have a very slow dispersal ability, there are of course a few species. Here for instance is a ginger, it's uh, an alpinia, and we see the fruit hanging from the top part, so all these type of fruits are dispersed by birds and by small rodents and other mammals. So of course, these even when the parts of forest are destroyed, animals can have a good transportation of the seeds. So this type of plants can establish quite easily and quite quickly, contrary to the plants with just small seeds. Of course, also alocasia have berry berry fruits which are dispersed by the birds so some industrial plants can recover in this forest but not all here we see an argostema it is uh, growing here on the vertical slope just close to the small river because the forest is very clear forest but here due to the proximity of the river. Of course, even during the dry season, the atmosphere remains quite humid. So it's why Argostema can survive and establish in these places along the river, simply for that. Here, we see a small pandanus. Some species are small, so we should see the following stage to be sure it's a small species. I'm very surprised because in, a, in a, this uh, swampy area, swamp ground, I did see from far something looking like uh, Heliconia, so I did say, oh, what does it mean, a Heliconia here, because it's, it did look like an Heliconia from Tropical America, so I say, what does it mean, and I did see all the small plants around, uh, issued probably from vegetative propagation, and finally, this is a tiny species of musa. It's a banana, a wild banana. But when I see the size, it's incredibly small banana. It has bright orange bracts. And there is one small erect fruit that I see here. At the base of the inflorescence is a small erect banana. So, I don't know at all what could be this small species able to have vegetative propagation in this totally swampy area. Muddy. This is a very small species of a Fresinesia. Uh, we don't see the adult stage, but according to the fact that climbing and after detach retaining always the same size of leaves, probably it is really a small species. We see all the adventitious roots arising from the stem. It is particular because the stem is red, reddish, and we can almost say red stem, and very dark green leaves. I think there is a name like Fresinesia tenuis or something like that. It could be which is from Borneo. I know there is a small species from Borneo, so it will be easy to know who is this guy. It's très beau, son, son côté velu orange, très élégant. Here, this shrub actually is a Lea, it's a member of the grape family Vitacee, 
but it is not at all climbing contrary to the tetrastigma for instance the host vine for the rafflesia this so this is a shrubby species and we see the terminal erect inflorescence and the leaves are totally decompound it's a compound leaf which is two times divided into smaller leaflets On this uh, trunk, a Fresinesia, a small Fresinesia climbing here, a ficus, and just above what is interesting, we see a ficus with small leaves and all the lateral stems are growing totally horizontally and embracing the trunk while climbing and all the leaves are displayed in the same plane perpendicular to the trunk it's a strange way, but a very good way to have many leaves, but all receiving the light due to this embracing shape of the small lateral stems around the trunk. Still another perfect adaptation to the forest understory dim light. Here on the bank along the forest stream we see a very small palm due to the shape of the leaves I think actually it's probably a small species of pinanga it has very narrow stem about uh, 7 millimeters in diameter it is adult tufted small species perfectly growing in humid places The upward climbing stage of the Fresinesia is still young and there are not yet the lateral stems. The ginger, but uh, this one is uh, very beautiful. It has totally wavy, wavy leaves, not hairy. Quite small stems, uh, with each stem with four or five leaves. I don't see inflorescences, but I think maybe it's a plagiostachis with the inflorescence arising from the middle of the pseudo stem. I suppose it's adult because all the stems are the same size so it seems it's not growing more than this but it is very elegant and the young leaves are a little copper color and after becoming dark green and the, what is important is that these wavy shapes allow the light from a diffuse direction to reach some chloroplast due to the fact that in first understory the light is always diffused in all directions so it increases the assimilatory surface and also allows all the direction of the light to be efficient. So the coppery young leaf, wavy, and we see that the under surface is reddish. Here we see a small tufted palm clumping with uh, five, six uh, stems, uh, very, very narrow stems, and we see all the leaves at the end of the stem. Due to the shape of the leaves, it's uh, Arenga, and it is probably a form of Arenga hookeriana because it's very diverse according to the shapes of the leaves uh, on the size of the plant also. Some are quite big, some are very small, and we see the inflorescence, it is totally adult because we see the spadix 
here. I shall ask to my friend to Marc Janson because he's specialist of this group of cardioid cardioid palms, and he will tell me if uh, which form it can be of Arenga ukariana or maybe something else. So uh, on this uh, young stem, still quite short, we see the young developing inflorescence, the spadix, not at all branched, huh? only one stem of the spadix and it is a flowering stage and it is very pale yellow. I'm much intrigued by this uh, creature. It's uh, there are three individuals, and probably it's adult because when we see the diameter of the trunk, it is a little trapping plant. I don't know if it's a member of Euphorbiaceae or a little bit indentate, maybe member of Myrcinaceae or since uh, the vine is raised upward it could look like uh, Ocnaceae. It is probably very very old because when we see the internodes which are very very short it is of course a litter trapping plant roots are developing inside and even some seedlings of trees and we see the roots growing inside the accumulation of litter which uh, gives uh, rise to nutrients so we can see the roots totally growing inside the accumulation of uh, the litter decomposing litter so typical litter trapping plant The adult stage of the small species of Fresinesia with the reddish stem and we see the detached lateral stems and it is very dense, it retains small leaves and at the apex of some stems we can see old inflorescences. I'm surprised to see so many stems because usually Fresinesia when they're adult they have only 5-10 stems arising from the main stem, but here it's totally tufted. There are some dozens of stems totally congested together, so it creates a very strange, dense thing just under the main branches of the tree. This pandanus-like plant actually is not a pandanus, it's a member of the Cyperaceae, the sedge family, but from forest understory, it is a mapania, and we see actually that this tufted mapania has very, very long acumen, acuminate end of the leaf, on all these leaves, the acumen is maybe 10 or 15 centimeters long. On this uh, vertical slope just above the forest stream, I did see Anelatostema and I did approach to look at more closely to this Anelatostema and what I see actually is begonia flowers <laughs> just in the axil of the leaves. So it's not at all of course an Anelatostema, it is a begonia and we see here the male flowers all along the stem. So there are so many species of begonia in Borneo, of course, but there are so many specialists. I ask to my friend, to Mark Hughes, he will tell me immediately who is this guy. In fact, it's very rich, eh, this forest. Here, hanging vertically from the clayish soil among the rocks on this vertical slope just above the forest stream, I see a monoculous hanging plant which has dentate leaves, quite thick leaves, and when 
I look at the fruits, it is typically member of Jesneriaceae, but not group of Sirtandra, which has berry fruits. This is a long, silicular fruit, a dry capsule, and it is of the Didymocarpoid alliance, may probably a Codonobea, or an allied genus, allied to Codonobea, but the leaves are very thick and dentate, and uh, we see the sepals, the tiny sepals, and the long, long capsular fruit. Tiny species of uh, Mapania, and it is very beautiful due to the dark green design of the vines on the leaves. And we have to say that this place is incredibly rich because here I see also just above a pentafragma. Here the Diplasium cordifolium with the bluish front. Uh, here a small schismatoglottis. Here is of course the begonia. Here a costus, here a bigger schismatoglottis, and when I move an erect amiscotolipe among the comelinaceae, here a small globa in the gingers, a ginger family. Here is probably a young stage of a pandanus, many different ferns, so it's incredible on about 10 square meters, I think there are at least 25 different understory plant species, each with very few individuals. So it means really that in this well protected area of Deramakot, where very few trees have been cut along this river, actually we see really that in the center of Saba, when the forest is well protected and managed, we can find a lot of interesting species remaining even after some logging. For me, it's one of the very hot spots for the understory plants here. Tu vois? Oui. In this same area, we see a patch of an Elatostema species. Here, the Diplasium, of course, and a very beautiful shrubby piper with uh, velvety leaves and the silvery white design in the center of the leaf, which is shiny because it has epidermal cells which are dome-shaped. The taller individual of this uh, litter trapping monocolous uh, shrub in the forest understory. Here I do still don't see inflorescence, so is it Euphorbiaceae, Ocnaceae, or something else? But uh, anyway, it's a small population here in this very swampy area. It is totally happy. Oh, and maybe it's in inflorescence in this area, so I try to... Ooh, ooh la la. Oh yes, this is inflorescence, ooh, but not developed. When I see the very small structures, flower buds in the axil of the bracts, it's a, a member of Euphorbiaceae, but uh, we should see the open flowers to be sure. Another member of the Jesneriaceae with very beautiful leaves, dark green with all the periphery 
which is silver white and finally again a dark green edge of the leaf. It is strange because it has no peciole, simply the leaf blade which uh, becomes narrower on two opposite leaves. It's probably a Sirtandra, enfin, of course a Jesnayase, probably a Sirtandra or maybe possible a Codonobia or something like that, but I think most probably a Sirtandra. So this uh, plant, uh, shrubby plant, is quite strong, growing just along the water. So it's a rheophytic uh, species, meaning that it can grow in fast-flowing water. I think it could be a certain dra, difficult to see exactly what happens just here in the insertion of the leaves. It seems there is one big leaf and opposite a small one scale-like leaf. So probably it's a plagiotropic Sirtandra, totally anisophilus, one big leaf on the one very small leaf, just opposite with all these horizontally growing stems. More than reduced, it's a really scale-like leaf, the big leaf, and opposite this small structure, which is the reduced leaf. Oh, on leeches on my fingers. She tries to find the right place to fix, but I remove her before. Here we see a totally horizontally displayed shrub. It's a member of the Rubiaceae, the coffee family. We see this easily due to the opposite leaves on the stipules, and it has a terminalia branching, creating these stages, horizontal kind of floors. And actually the ant plant, we can see the swollen parts of the stem here, swollen and totally empty. I see the small ants. There is an opening and the ants are growing inside the opening to have nest everywhere. See, I try to open just to see. Oh, I see some ants going. Oh, ah, yes, and we see all the babies. I disturb them, but they have other pockets like this all along the stem. Oh, elle n'est pas contente, elle te pique là. Oui, c'est pas grave. Ça va, tu vois ce qu'il y a, tu vois tout le couvain qui est dedans. Oui. Alors... Ouh. Tout 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 tout. What is this? Oh, blackish, blackish leaves, totally plagiotropic, a little bit hairy, purple on the lower side. Oh, what it could be, it could be a Jesneriaceae, it could be a Cantaceae, it could be a Pooh, I think not a Elatostema, no, I don't think so. Maybe also why not an Argostema? <laughs> The leaves are totally wavy, totally three-dimensional surface of the leaf, thus increasing considerably the total surface of the assimilatory tissue, and shiny. The other side is... Uh, and the other side is totally purple, mm. with, uh, we see all the impressed structures uh, between the vines, so it's a prominent on the upper side and totally hidden part on the lower side. Yes, it's uh, another species of begonia, and this one has a totally silvery white surface of the blade, and uh, it has very long acumen, so it's totally different from the other species around here. Another beautiful 
number of Arase, probably again a schismatoglottis uh, with silver designed leaves. Here we can see uh, an erect uh, herbaceous species and nodes are swollen, opposite entire leaves and tubular flowers which are a little bit asymmetrical. So no doubt it's a member of Acanthaceae family with the yellow flowers. So it is growing in a habitat which is regularly flooded during the rain season, but it's uh, well fixed inside the soil. It's very dark now. Oh, it's very dark. It's only less than four o'clock, but uh, raining a little bit. And as I see this shrub, it looks like a monocolous shrub, but actually it has successive layers of leaves, of rosetted leaves. And we see that actually there are some lateral shoots, which have only is at the end of the shoot. Oh, and here we can see the fruits with again a lateral stem with only three leaves and the terminal inflorescence giving the small berries typical of uh, Ardizia. It's a dark brown leaved plant totally prostrate on the leaf litter. Uh, actually it has uh, opposite leaves and when I look carefully I see the no stipules. It doesn't look like a Gesneriaceae so I think maybe an Acanthaceae. We see here the flower of uh, this uh, Gesneriaceae, I think is the same we have seen before with a long uh, capsular fruit, so it could be a Codonobea or something quite close to Codonobea, but what is sure it is a Gesneriaceae. Actually when I see the flowers and in some way the early development of the fruits, I think maybe it could be a Sirtandra and not at all developing in a long capsular fruit. So we should see the mature fruits to know if it's a group of Codonobea or a Sirtandra. So finally, when I look at the fruits really developing, I see that these small fruits are cylindrical and not at all a long capsular fruit, we see everywhere these cylindrical berry-like fruits, so it is a Sirtandra and not at all a Codonobea. We see an Amorphophallus, which has very beautifully designed leaves because there is a central silver-white macule just 
on each side of the main vine of each leaflet of this compound leaf because Amorphophallus have a three-partite compound leaf and actually this silver design is due to the epidermal cells which are totally empty which are filled only with the air so it's exactly like a soap bubbles when you take your bath which is totally reflecting the light because for the plants living in a forest understory it's not an advantage to reflect the light because there is a so small amount of available light but due to this design the leaf is very difficult to spot in the forest understory so probably it's a protection against herbivorous animals i love the little tip the white silver white tip of each leaflet absolutely perfect design So here I see something, actually looks like a member of Marantacea. Of course there are two forms, the green leaf form and the bright grey leaf form, but actually, ah, here is a flower. Okay, ooh, so good tiny flower. Obviously it's a ginger and uh, it is probably uh, Scaphoclamis, uh, which is a genus of small understory species, but this one is very, very small. Some have only one leaf, some have a uh, few leaves, but this uh, grows exactly like uh, some Marantaceae, but obviously it's a ginger, uh, Scaphoclamis. These uh, very beautifully maculate leaves uh, belong to a pepper, to Piper porphyrophyllum. It's a species we can see in uh, Peninsular Malaysia, in Borneo, in southern Thailand. Actually, it's uh, not common, but it's very widespread. And it's a typical understory species with uh, totally brown and uh, velvety leaves, so usually many species here. Here it's uh, climbing the main monopodial stem and it has not yet the lateral fertile stem. But it's quite funny because this piper, actually we see it quite often in the forest, but mostly climbing on uh, very short trees or running along the ground, but we very rarely see the adult stages climbing at the top of the trees. But of course, since it is in many different areas, it means that it has quite often inflorescence on fruits dispersed probably by birds or maybe bats. Not the wind, of course, because everybody knows how is a, a spadix of a piper. So it's a really animal dispersal. Here we see a leech on the leaf and it is erect. So I approach my hand just to know if she feels I'm hot. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yes, she's moving. Oh, oh yes, she knows where it's good. Yeah, she's looking around. Huh? Hmm? She doesn't like me. It's strange. Je pense qu'elle me, elle m'aime bien moi. Oh yeah, she, she wants to meet you. Tu sais comment elle s'allonge? This mapania is very special because the design on the leaves actually is made of many small squares, totally dark green, so it means it's spots with a higher accumulation of chlorophyll in these areas. The remaining parts of the leaves are light green and probably there is an intense photosynthesis around these dark green square spots. Uh, this uh, very beautiful uh, plant with uh, leaves uh, like uh, butterfly wings uh, is climbing vertically exactly the same way as a piper or as a arase. So piper and arase are fixed by adventitious roots uh, like the ivy 
interplanet countries along the track and climbing vertically. But actually, this is not at all the same family. This is the Cucurbitaceae, the cucumber family, probably this Trichosantes alliance. And actually, when we look more closely, we see that it is attached to the trunk by a tiny green tendril fixed on the bark of uh, the trunk. So it is climbing vertically with upraised leaves, exactly the same adaptation, but here it's not roots, it's simply the tendrils which are fixing, like uh, some vitacee also climbing on the walls in temperate countries. I'm very surprised to see these uh, hanging strings with leaves and when I look with uh, binoculars actually I see that it's hanging stems of a piper so there is the main stem hanging which is a monopodial stem and all the lateral short branches which are the sympodial stems bearing the spadices so it's the first time I see a piper growing like this, I mean growing first along the trunk to climb, then on the branches, and finally totally hanging and bearing the fertile lateral stems like this. The fruits of uh, the was the porcelain and so Etlingera elatior. So we, we see that it is native, it loves, of course, since it's a huge ginger, it loves uh, quite open areas, like along the roads or in a big forest gap, but it is native from here. I did look at uh, these very thin stems, I did think it uh, could be a psilotum, but actually these are the flowering stems, uh, photosynthetic, totally green, long leaves, the flowering stems, and at the base we see typical orchid leaves and with all the roots uh, carpeting the base and creating a dense humus collecting structure along the trunk. very special orchid because it is climbing and we see that the stem is climbing without producing leaves, only roots fixing the stem to the trunk and then it becomes totally 
horizontal, totally plagiotropic, and it produces all the leaves, and again, after it grows from the base of the reclining stem, and we see the new shoot here, and after a new kind of rosette of leaves, the inflorescence is terminal. We see an old, old inflorescence here, with the bract, and just a spike. It's uh, faded, so we see all the inflorescences. What is interesting is that it retains the leaves even in the very, very old stems. We see each stem is flowering and growing, and even the old ones are retaining the leaves probably for many, many years. On this stem, we can see the terminal apical inflorescence. We see the bract here, the green bract, and we see some dead old flowers, but here it seems that a new one, it's a flower bud, so a new one is arising now. We clearly see the stem growing upwards with the lateral roots fixing totally the plant to the trunk and then turning at right angle to produce the leafy stem and all the plicate leaves are here with terminal inflorescence and after a new shoot arises just at the place where the right angle to have a new shoot. And here for instance we see all the roots embracing the trunk like an arase. It's quite strange for an orchid to see this type of growth habit. So here, just under this piece of wood, we see a very beautiful sonerilla, member of Melastomataceae, with dark green leaves, and in the middle, a central stripe, which is totally white, silvery white, and I did see I wasn't struck by the other long, uh, narrow, very similar white things, but actually these white things are not at all the sonerilla or mushroom, it is the legs of a spider, a big spider, which is in some way very camouflaged because it has exactly the same type of color as a sonerilla just above. So I don't know if it's a hazard or if it's a good way for a good camouflage below the sonerilla. Very well camouflaged, so now it's uh, hunting on the soil, so maybe it's a, a good way for her to, to be just under the sonerilla because nobody can see her. She has exactly the same design. So here we see a population of uh, this uh, beautiful sonerilla and what's interesting is that it keeps uh, the bright white design along the midrib, along the main vine, even in the adult stage because we see fruit everywhere. So the so characteristic erect capsular fruit in three lobes, uh, symmetry is three, and of course the raindrops falling in this uh, capsular foods during the splash have all the tiny seeds because uh, seeds are much less than one millimeter in diameter and they can germinate on the surface and here on these vertical surfaces all the young plants which are very blue iridescent we see the different sizes from the tiny ones here 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 and after, when they become a little bit bigger, they have the blue iridescence. We can see on this one, the very blue shine. And when I move the leaf, we see that the blue appears or disappears 
according to the direction of the light, which is characteristic of these iridescent colors, which are not at all pigments colors, but it's physical colors, same as uh, for the wings uh, of uh, many insects, butterflies and coleopters. Here we see the contrast between the background of the decaying trunk of a dead tree, the bright blue young baby sonerilla and the brown leaves of the Piper Porphyrophyllum. The flower buds, like for many sonerilla, the color is pink of the flower and after it becomes erect once the petals are falling for the maturation of the fruit. Here are growing side by side two dwarf species of palms. This one with a quite long stem is probably a pinanga, we did see already small pinanga, this one or another one, but it's uh, always interesting to see so small palms and this one which is so shiny, so beautiful and which is obviously a Likuala species, but uh, this one is <laughs> It's strange because usually Likuala are much bigger, but this one seems really to be adult like this because all the leaves are about almost the same size. And actually the leaflets are perfectly cut. It's very shiny and very elegant distribution of the leaflets. Is it spiny? Because, oh yes, yes, yes. Usually the Likuala have somewhat spiny peciole and this one of course has spiny peciole. Anyway, it's a very, very beautiful small species. Here we see a potos. I see it's not a raphidophora due to the venation, which is much more intricate and so much more divided. So these are the young leaves and we see that they are totally oppressed. And we see, for instance, here that there is a stem and the leaf is totally covering the stem. It's a really the tigmotropism. Here we see also the leaf changing the direction to cover the stem and when we move just a little bit upwards we can see this leaf totally oppressed and it is dark green oh and it's funny because we see it's totally oppressed because no light on the tree trunk and we see exactly the shape of the leaf oppressed to the trunk of course this avoid totally transpiration from the stomata on the lower surface of the leaf, so it's a good, very good protection against dehydration during the dry season. Here is a small, very elegant species of a Likuala. It has very, very narrow peciole, very long. The pecioles are uh, more than 1.5 meters long. And the leaf have only three leaflets, a wide one in the middle and two small ones on each side. And all the leaves are exactly like this. So it's uh, not so common, this uh, shape of leaf, and it is, no, just almost not spiny, but so very, very long peciole. Only one individual here, we can see. Yeah. 
so huge a compass yeah and uh, all along the track we can see the ladder <laughs> the kind of ladder built inside the trunk by people in order to install some honey baskets and to collect honey inside the crown of the compass yeah one of the tallest trees in the Malaysian and Bornean forest, Kumpasia excels. Very interesting because uh, they have uh, the wooden part totally perpendicular to the trunk, and after, just below the bark, the cambium is growing and totally covering the wooden stick, which becomes very hard and it becomes ladder due to the growth of the trunk itself around the sticks. A huge basket of the staghorn fern, a platycerium. Many are growing together, totally around the bowl of the tree. And we clearly see the erect fronts, which are still green and collecting humus. And after, they will be curved uh, backward, just fixing all the dead leaves falling from the tree and we see the hanging fronts uh, which are for photosynthesis for quite a long time and from here um, I think we can see the brown uh, cup-shaped uh, things which are the parts bearing the soil so it's a perfectly organized fern when I see this from here maybe ooh, la, la, maybe 100-200 kilograms of a uh, humus humid fixed here because all the fern is something like three meters in diameter so we can imagine if it's about 80 centimeters or one meter deep <laughs> what it means about <laughs> the accumulation of humus and water this uh, much branched uh, pioneer tree just uh, on the edges of the forest along the road, actually the Calicarpa, probably Calicarpa arborea, a member of the Verbenaceae or Labiate, and we see the purple flowers, the stamens, and the fruits, which are berry fruits, which become orange when they are ripe, and of course many birds love these small berries. On dirait un gros cloport. Attends, 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 il se déboule. Ah, les pattes. Tu le touches Oui, il peut, il peut. C'est juste une boule totale. <rire> Isn't quite a <laughs> Melastoma malabatricum, this is one of the most common shrubby pioneer species we can see everywhere in Asia as soon as the forest is destroyed along road. Here is a track, a logging track, and it's, a, it's common but so beautiful and it's a typical flower of Melastomataceae family and we can see two types of stamens here in the flower. Here along this uh, long, very narrow string uh, climbing on the tree, actually we see the lateral, very thin parts, which are the fronts uh, of a ligodium fern, but these are the fertile fronts, and I'm very surprised to see such a long portion of the fertile front because it's about three meters long and uh, it has a succession of uh, maybe 20 or 30 fertile lateral frond lobes and we can see the transition on the more usual wider assimilatory fronts and the transition to these fertile parts.
This uh, ginger is actually an emerging from the like uh, leafy stem and it is ooh, la, ooh, la big sensu. No? Yeah, so the leeches are sometimes on the leaves of the plants, like this one waiting for me. So <laughs> this uh, is uh, probably an Etlingera and we see the very densely brown purple spotted leaves and in this young leaf it's uh, incredibly beautiful uh, like uh, like a blood like a bloody leaf uh, and uh, when the plant uh, matures when the stems become bigger usually it loses these uh, spots so it's probably an etlingera but which species only my friend Axel Dalberg Poulsen could probably tell us what is this creature. Etlingera elatior in habitat uh, in quite open areas and she loves the forest gaps and also of course along the roads in the forest the roads for uh, logging unfortunately In this clump, we see all the infructescences, mature infructescences of this Etlingera elatior. Huge alocasia. It is of the Macrorhizos. Uh, group but it is obviously different the shape of the leaf is different the vines are very very prominent on the upper surface so this is different so there is a very big species which is Alocasia robusta in Borneo so probably this is a quite young specimen of Alocasia robusta the under surface of the leaf is not really green it's uh, whitish, which is very different from Alocasia macrorhizos, and all on the glands I see in the axil of each lateral vine, these green whitish structures, which are surrounded by a darker area, so these are glands uh, secreting sugars, and Alocasia are uh, quite famous for the glands, but this one has really huge glands in the axil of each vine along the midrib, the main vine. When we see this leaf, uh, we can understand the species name Robusta for this Alocasia. It's uh, actually, the peciole is about uh, 1.5 meters and uh, blade itself is maybe 1.2 meters and altogether more than 3 meters for this Alocasia. It is of course the biggest species of Alocasia in the world. Another species of Alocasia with very, very, very thick leaves, very thick leaves. It's a big species, not as big as uh, Alocasia robusta, but very big. And it has very beautiful peciole with uh, dark purple dots, uh, totally crowded. And it's uh, when we see from a very short distance, it's incredibly beautiful. And what is also beautiful is the open part of the sheath of the leaves, which is a bright, uh, bright green inside, a kind of uh, emerald green inside the 
she's of the leaves, so it's a very beautiful plant. And here we can see the glands in the axil of the main lateral vines. And the glands are surrounded by a purple circle. They are shiny and they are shiny because it's a secretion of sugar and the sugar is very shiny. Probably ants are collecting the sugar and ensuring a protection of the leaves against insects. In this uh, huge patisserium we see at the top where all the litter is accumulating and uh, transforming into compost, we see that uh, ginger is growing inside and in this case it is most probably an edicium because edicium is a genus of ginger which is very often epiphytic. So we can see the white leaves of the edicium and also somebody else is growing inside. I have actually that two species of ginger. On the left is a totally different plant, not at all looking like an edicium, so I don't know what is it. On the right side, the one with the white leaves, of course, is much more typical of edicium, but on the left side, I don't know what is this guy. Tu vois ce que je veux dire, Goulot? Oui, il bah, y a deux, deux types de feuilles. Ben, oui. Mais l'édicium, tu vois, il fait bien l'édicium. Lui, euh, lui, il n'intrigue pas. Mais l'autre... Oui, c'est les fruits hanging fruits uh, arrivent from this small tree with uh, huge compound leaves. So it's probably a meliacée or uh, maybe a sapalacée, probably same as the Longan family. These uh, fruits are good, it could be good in cultivation. <laughs> Two days of a trip in the forest, some good part, some not so good part, but so many interesting plants. Yeah, so surprising. Many, um, it's a big, beautiful surprise. Oh, a baby. 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 Oh là là, il y en a deux. Two. Yeah, the tail is very long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful color, it's amazing.
Qui c'est qui va le tuer, la gueule We are just entering the Sepilok Forest Reserve, which is named Discovery Center. And just at the entrance, I see this uh, Raphidophora, so Raphidophora foraminifera. So what's interesting is that when the leaves keep still the juvenile phase, we see that holes are distributed on each side of the vine. But when the plant uh, progressively moves to an adult stage, the leaves are bigger, and what is most interesting is that actually the holes, it's a disticus growth, I mean one leaf on one side, then following leaf on the other side. So on this side, all the holes are at the periphery of the leaf, only on one side of the main vine, and on the other side, it's at the periphery of the uh, global shape of the plant. So it means that when we consider one leaf from the bottom to the apex, the holes are always on the left side of the midrib, on the leaves on the other side, the holes are distributed on the right side of the main vine. So we see it's totally symmetrical, it's a kind of mirror in the distribution of the holes. This tree is quite small tree. <laughs> it's actually named here in Sepilok the Kabili Monster. And it is 75 meters tall. It's one of the tallest trees of this forest. We see all the buttresses, the huge buttresses, of course, and the trunk without branches and suddenly probably at around 45 or 50 meters all these main branches are constructed along the downward successive bifurcations maintaining in a perfect mechanical way the structure of the branches it has only maybe six main branches, each of course are terminated by smaller and smaller bifurcations and branches and the leafy parts are of course at the extremity and we see the crownlet shyness between these ultimate branches. Along the trunk we see a very dense dark green carpeting thing which is maybe six or seven meters tall by five meters wide and it's totally covered by only one single layer of leaves and what is very strange we see orange bowls emerging from this foliage so no doubt this is a ficus, but what is very strange is that the figs are appearing on the stems, which are not lateral, totally different stems. They appear directly on the carpet, and they are quite huge. So it's very unusual to see no transformation between the upright carpeting stems and the 
la Terra stems bearing the seed. So this is an example of something like a kind of neoteny where the seeds are appearing on what seems to be a juvenile foliage. It's a huge palmate-leaved palm emerging from the forest understory on that we can see from the canopy walkway in Sepiloc. Actually, this palm is probably a species of Levistona due to the shape of these palmate leaves. And uh, we see younger specimen just in forest understory gap uh, with a much more regular leaflet and much more bright green. A Fresinesia in the totally adult stage, so we see all the lateral stem and we see the red roots at the end of these lateral stems. And uh, I'm surprised because it reaches probably around 25 30 meters all around the ball of a dead tree. And it is growing now in full sun because it was a big forest gap due to a tree fall in the middle. And it can withstand perfectly the full sunlight. Here in the northern part of Borneo, we are quite surprised to see so many climbing plants with long, long, long hanging shoots, which are also branched and producing flowers. So there are probably many different things. So there are ficus, I've seen also some piper like this, and also probably that, for instance, uh, the, the cl vertically climbing uh, member of uh, Cucurbitaceae also maybe can have this way of life. Same probably many Asclepiadaceae because we see Asclepiadaceae with the young oppressed leaves of the BCA group. But it's not so common to see these hanging curtains, uh, warps, it's a green warps hanging from the trees almost everywhere here in Sabah. What is quite strange <laughs> concerning these uh, hanging green warts is that they belong to 
climbing lianas, which are not at all big woody lianas, but most probably all of them are the young stage climbing vertically, either fish by adventitious roots, same as for piper, miniarace, for instance, or by the tendrils with adhesive disc, like what we can see, for instance, in uh, some cucurbitaceae. Of course, also the, the apocinaceae are totally fixed by adventitious roots. Here we see on the canopy walk one of these hanging stems and what we see first is a huge glance at the base of the leaf blade which are very prominent and two totally two bowl shaped glands. We see also these tendrils very similar to the tendrils that I did see on the plant with the leaf shaped like the wings of a butterfly climbing along the trunk. So probably this is the adult stage of this so beautiful winged young stage climbing vertically and fixing by these very, very efficient tendrils because they are curved like uh, just uh, like my nails, <laughs> I am the kind of fix all along the trunks and climbing in this way. So, is it a cucurbitaceae or a passiflorasee? These are two related families. Here, it's mostly cucurbitaceae. Who knows, maybe it could be something like a adenia for this group of passiflorasee we can find also in Asia. Mm -hmm. are couilles. inflorescence, which is a branched panicle. It seems quite small flowers hanging at this stage and we see it's so clearly the same organ as the tendrils because we see all along the axis of the inflorescence parts of tendrils. So it's an axillary structure which is either a tendril when climbing or an inflorescence when it is adult and in the stage of flowering. Here we see clearly the metamorphosis of the butterfly wing leaves of this cucurbitaceae or maybe passiflorasee climbing and suddenly changing the leaf shape to the more usual a little bit earth shaped leaf. The biggest arrasé is Alocasia robusta and here we can really understand what means a huge leaf, probably the biggest entire leaf when we take the percent of the length of the blade to the width of the blade, probably the surface is for an entire oval leaf is by far the biggest in the world, not only among Arasi. I'm very surprised because I see this patch of a bright green white leaves. What is it? Is it can look like an elatostema in urticaceae or like a piper? Oh yeah, the pistiole has a sheath. It is sheathing at the base. 
So it is a piper, but it's very strange because usually I see smaller piper like this mostly in tropical America. So I'm very surprised to see this in Asia, the sheath of the leaf. Here we see also on the next leaf that the terminal bud is protected by the sheath. meter tall forest plant is this one, the Shorea acutissima, and we see all the big branches totally emerging with a radial way from the top of the next ball. Of course, it became next due to the loss of the old previous branches, and we see in the periphery, all the small crownlets with the characteristic shyness, so the separation between each smaller crown, all perfectly leaving no broken parts, and it seems very healthy. I am a little bit intrigued by this small species of costus. We see some stems here, here, here. So obviously this is a small species with quite few leaves. And I'm a little bit intrigued because in West Africa there is a costus anglerianus which has been transferred to another genus, if I remember correctly, is Paracostus for a small species creeping on the ground and which has only usually one leaf per stem or this one has usually only two, 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 three and one small leaves and recently has been described another species of the genus Paracostus in Borneo. I don't uh, remember where it was described, but when I see this plant, I see some similarities with Costus anglerianus that I know quite well in West Africa. So, there are no flowers, but the leaf shape is very characteristic, the size also, so it should be very strange to find, because only two species in Paracostus, so one in Central West Africa and one in Borneo. So, Maybe it is this one. This arase creeping on the forest floor has almost blackish leaves, even bluish black. Oh la la, yes, when we, we see these leaves, its uh, color is totally shiny and uh, Quite incredible. Probably this is the creeping form of a Sandapsus troibii, a species which is quite common, but here the leaves are very wide and very black. I did think according to the perfectly plagiotropic stems and alternate leaves and asymmetric leaves which are totally covering the space due to the main lateral stem, so it's uh, rhomboid leaves. First I did think this would be an anisophilia, but just as the name suggests, we should have two types of leaves, or here only one type of leaf, and when I look on the other side, I see absolutely nothing. So finally, I think this could be an ebony, a diospiros. Oh, here is a tetrastigma growing inside it. We 
it's an anthrophium. It has very thick fronds. Uh, it's a fern. We see the dividing vines. Dark color is due to sorry all along the vines on the under surface of the frond. And we see the young frond is very, very soft, very beautiful. We see clearly all the sorry distributed on the vines, the dividing vines regularly in two parts. Very characteristic of uh, this genus Anthrophium. Superbes. I'm very surprised <laughs> to see here this uh, small tree with long shiny leaves, uh, all the young leaves light green. It's no doubt at all, it's a podocarpus, it's a species of podocarpus and I'm very surprised why, because here we are exactly at uh, sea level so not at all in altitude and almost at the equator because I think we are about uh, 5 degrees north of equator. Usually we see them from uh, 1000, 1500 meters up to 3000 or more. The evolution allows many different things even in one genus. Thank <laughs> you.